So, once again, I'm showing you this awesome animation from Seabass Productions. Find him linked in the description and subscribe, by the way, because I don't have an actual hop to show you. And this is the same level of frustration, I think, that a lot of YouTubers are feeling right now. Even though, days ago, we pretty much realized that the Starship wasn't going to hop on Wednesday. And this isn't meant to be a criticism of SpaceX by any stretch of the imagination, but it was over 64 days ago that I released my first video about this hop, and it was considered to be imminent even then. But that just proves that space is hard, whether you're SpaceX, ULA, or anybody else. And as we all know, SN8 is fundamentally different from every other prototype that's gone up this far, and that's because it has to do this. The belly flop, the suicide dive, whatever you want to call it. Getting to 15 kilometers, it's not the hard part. It's maintaining stability in the atmosphere, it's flaps, it's avionics, it's aerodynamic qualities, all of these things are critical right up to the point of landing. If it's successful or close to successful, then we have a realistic chance of landing on Mars with a human crew in the next few years. If not, then we may not be able to. And even though, as I've pointed out in the past, landing on Earth is fundamentally different and a whole lot easier than landing on Mars, what happens tomorrow, or hopefully tomorrow, is going to be absolutely critical in terms of whether or not we can look forward to a moment like this when fleets of starships are carrying large numbers of people safely and quickly to the Red Planet. And there's going to be a number of details I'm going to be looking for during this test, as are many others. What are these details? Well, most of them are going to involve comparing what's being shown in these simulations that we've been watching for quite some time now and what happens tomorrow. And the similarities and differences that exist between landing the starship on the red planet, as this simulation is supposed to indicate, and what happens when the starship lands on Earth or hopefully does so tomorrow. And I'm going to explain what these differences are and yet why both of them matter a hell of a lot in just a few moments. Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. So, once again, I am talking to you about the upcoming 15-kilometer hop instead of an analysis of the hop, as I was hoping to do at this point, and it's me and a whole lot of other YouTubers who are probably in the same boat. But that having been said, there's still a lot of things that we could actually talk about when it comes to this very important historic test. And a lot of it has to do with things that we have already seen, which I'll talk to you a little bit more about during the course of the video itself. But also I want to talk about things that I'm going to be looking for in the course of the flight details about the flight, specifics that are going to be very, very important that will determine whether or not Elon Musk really has a realistic shot of getting to Mars with a human crew by 2024 or 2026. Now, I know it may be a little hard to believe that 
I could determine so much or anybody could determine so much by the first test. But there are certain things that are going to be revealed by this test that are going to tell us whether or not we're going to be able to land successfully on Mars with the present plan, with the present ship. And that may all seem quite impossible to you, but I'm going to explain to you how we're going to do this and how SpaceX, I think, is planning to do this right now. As exciting and as impressive as the takeoff and the ascent is going to be, it's not really going to tell us much about how the Starship is going to function. This vacuum raptor being tested in front of you right now is what's going to be giving the Starship its actual power, at least for taking off from Mars and in space. It is a far more powerful engine than the sea level engine that you see on your left. So the sea level engines serve only to give the Starship an altitude of 15 kilometers and that's about it. The vacuum engines, which can surf serve on the surface of Mars since it's practically a vacuum anyway, and also in space, are really going to be providing a lot of the thrust for the Starship. So the simulation as far as takeoff and ascent is concerned is not going to be much of a simulation. But in my opinion, there is one thing that's happened in the course of this test that has told us something already about reusability. This mission has been scrubbed because of winds and other weather conditions for a number of days this week, and we can expect this to happen over and over again as the Starship comes into general use. So this entire concept of the Super Heavy coming straight down and a new Starship being loaded up for refueling purposes almost immediately or three times a day may be a bit fanciful, unless we have multiple takeoff sites across the planet. Weather, winds, and other things that delay rocket launches are going to affect the Starship. It's just not going to be immune to these sorts of things, and what's happened over the last few weeks is proof of that. So since the Starship is going to require a minimum of five tanker refills before it sets off for Mars, and any of these five tanker refills could be delayed by launch scrubs, weather, etc., like I've just been talking about, it could be a good idea for us to look at propellant depots in orbit, which could do an entire refueling all at once, as I have advocated in the past. And this is something that, in my opinion, we've learned before we've even started the hop. Now, another feature of the Starship that's going to be tested, kind of surprisingly, in the course of this 15-kilometer hop is going to be the heat tiles. And no, there's not going to be any kind of extensive re-entry heat or anything along those lines. However, the Starship, or at least SN8, still has heat tiles attached. And these tiles were there for SN6 and 7 as well during the 150 meter hops. Why? Because they want to see whether or not the tiles are going to remain attached through the shock of takeoff, through the shock of landing, and other stresses that are going to be put on the structure of the Starship. Now keep in mind, SpaceX has yet to make a final decision on exactly what kind of tiles they're going to be using. Yes, they have tested some extensively, but they're not certain as to how they're going to be attached, although a three stud method is preferred. But if after these tests, some of them shake loose as a result of just a 15 kilometer hop, they may need to consider other methods of protecting the ship from heat, the heat of re-entry. And speaking of heat, one of the Achilles heel of the Starship, or a potential Achilles heel, is where the flaps meet the structure of the ship, the joint so to speak. If the seals there are exposed to too much heat, as they're likely to be, they could theoretically melt with disastrous consequences and it's going to be difficult to protect them. And unfortunately, this test is not going to do anything to rectify that problem. 
But the real hold your breath moment will come when the atmospheric raptors shut off and the starship falls into its skydiver or suicide dive mode. This is the most important part of the test. How aerodynamic is this vessel going to be? And most importantly, how much are the flaps and other aspects of the structure going to reduce the aerial speed of the vehicle? This is going to be incredibly important for a safe landing. And I'll tell you something, my eyes are going to be glued to the aerial speed indicators that SpaceX is hopefully going to be providing. Because in this simulation, as you can see, and this is supposedly on Mars, the speed is going to be anywhere from 67 to 68 meters per second. This comes out to about 250 kilometers per hour, or roughly 50 kilometers an hour faster than terminal velocity on Earth. And by the way, 25% of terminal velocity on Mars. And yes, you heard that right. In spite of the lower gravity, terminal velocity on Mars, because of the incredibly thin atmosphere, approaches 1,000 kilometers an hour. So in order to achieve the velocities that are depicted in that simulation, the aerodynamics of the Starship are going to have to be sufficient to reduce terminal velocity by 75%. That is an extremely tall order, and on Earth, this should provide a tremendous amount of speed reduction. Now look, I'm not an aviation engineer. As far as I'm concerned, the SpaceX simulations are correct. However, if tomorrow's test indicates that the aerodynamic qualities of the Starship do not reduce its speed tremendously in a very dense atmosphere, then it indicates that the same problem is going to happen on Mars, and a powered descent is going to be required rather than relying so much on the atmosphere for a safe landing, therefore changing the nature of the entire mission and therefore delaying man's arrival on the surface. However, if the test does work out and the aerodynamics of the Starship do reduce its speed by a tremendous amount, then that's a very good sign that we're on the right track. And this leads me to another thing that we can learn from this test. If we come out with a precise, successful landing, this is not necessarily cause for celebration. And that sounds really counterintuitive, but it could be true, and let me tell you why. If a precise landing during the test is a result of pulling up too early, this is the wrong way to proceed because it's the wrong way to land on Mars. Or at least it's the wrong way to land if you're low on fuel and you're using the atmosphere, almost every bit of it to reduce your speed before you relight your engines and use them to reduce speed at the last second. I have an article linked in the description that describes this process. And if this is used as Elon plans, it's going to require that the Starship pull up at a height of no more than about 300 meters. If it pulls up any earlier, it's not going to be using the densest part of the Martian atmosphere to slow down. And the Starship may run out of fuel as a result before it reaches the ground, which would be disastrous. So when it comes right down to it, if you want the future that you're looking at right now, the importance of tomorrow's test cannot be overstated. SN8 must perform at least to some degree, or at least the prototypes that come after it. Regardless of what happens with the super heavy or orbital refueling, if the Starship cannot bleed off speed in the atmosphere and successfully land using the belly flop or suicide dive or whatever you want to call it, then getting humans on the red planet is a lot further in the future than 2024 or 2026. So let's hope that this test is a success tomorrow. A lot is riding on it. But...
Yes, there are going to be other tests. Yes, SpaceX is going to be able to fine tune quite a lot of things as time goes on. But there are going to be some things that they're not going to be able to fine tune without a complete redesign of the ship. If the existing avionics and, and flaps and design of the ship that's intended to reduce the speed, the atmospheric speed of the vessel does not provide enough speed reduction in an atmosphere that's over a hundred times as dense as that of the red planet, then that is a bad sign. We should see at least a 50% reduction in speed as a result of what SpaceX has put onto this rocket. Hopefully more in order to achieve the speeds that are being shown in their simulations. In addition to that, it's going to be very important that SpaceX wait until the last possible moment, as I said in the video, to pull up out of their suicide dive, as I like to call it, in order to properly simulate what's going to be necessary on Mars. Because as I said during the video, Landing on Mars using mostly the atmosphere is going to require that the Starship get right close to the nap of the Earth, within a few hundred meters of the surface of the Earth before it pulls up and relights its engines. And they're going to need to simulate that here on Earth, where they have the luxury of a much, much denser atmosphere to work with to see whether or not it's going to be effective. Because even though, as I said, Mars has a gravity that's way less than Earth's, the terminal velocity is, well, terminal five times what it is on Earth. And that's going to be a very difficult thing to overcome. And I'm going to be very interested to see what the what the flaps, what the aerodynamic qualities of the Starship does to its atmospheric speed as it plunges towards the Earth. It's all going to be very fascinating and it's going to be very important. If everything that they've done provides a very substantial reduction in speed, then they're on the right track. If it does not, in my opinion, if they want to land on Mars by 2024 or 2026, it's going to take a lot of design modifications or a different plan than the suicide dive plan if humans landing on Mars is not going to be a, well, suicidal prospect. All of that having been done, a lot of folks on YouTube do not say the sorts of things I do when it comes to things like this. And if you like my take on, on the Starship, on SpaceX, or indeed on space policy in general, because obviously I go after the other guys a whole lot more aggressively than I do SpaceX, well, you know how to support me. I still have this mug. I really want to blow it up, and I really need to get to 40,000 subscribers. We're getting closer every day. And in the description, you can support me on Patreon, through my merch, PayPal, a lot of different ways to support this channel and benefits that are provided to you for doing so. But until this this hop finally takes place. And also, we've had the time to analyze the results and determine what this test means for the future of our ambitions or Elon's ambitions, but really all the rest of us too. These lofty ambitions of landing on the red planet and establishing a permanent human presence there for a long time to come. I urge all of you, to stay angry about space.